time to get back to some old school Soldier Nation videos. And by that I mean we're dissecting a body part today that we probably haven't done in like two years. Like I haven't done just a ab video in like two years. So it's definitely time to do that. And it's not just because, okay, it is because I have abs, but I get a lot of people asking me to do these. Um, there's a lot of myths surrounding ab training. Number one, stop doing sit-ups. Just stop doing sit-ups. Even crunches aren't a great developer of abs. Um, the other thing I wanna discuss, you can't, can't, can't crunch your way to abs or do abs, train your abs to where you get six pack. Having abs is a result of working out, eating right, and being at a caloric deficit to where you have minimal body fat to then show your abs. And when I talk about abs, you have your transverse abdomen. Transverse abdomen there. You have your serratus. These are serratuses up here. You have your external obliques right here. External obliques start like your eighth rib, run down your pelvis. Your transverse abdomen starts at your pelvis, runs, runs up to your sternum here. Then underneath that external oblique, you actually have an internal oblique that runs the opposite way. So external oblique runs this way, internal obliques run up towards your midsection. And then even below that, you have your transverse abdomen. And that really is like your, your own personal safety belt. It is really, it's, it, it, it runs around your waist this way, whereas the transverse is up and down, this runs laterally. So that's really the four, and then you also have your serratuses, which come into play. They're a cool muscle, they look good when you're lean. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna primarily be talking about those first four today. So stop doing crunches. Don't think you can, you can train your abs to a six pack. Studies show that you can do abs every day and it's not gonna do a damn thing to change your body composition unless you have the proper nutrition, you're following your macros, you're following your meal plan, you're getting leaner. Now what we are doing, now that's called spot reduction. Spot reduction is when you think you can do a million sit-ups and you're gonna have abs. Just is not the case. What that does is help spot shape. You might have muscle, you might develop ab muscles, but until you get rid of that layer of fat over top of everything, they're not gonna show. Lastly, genetic, genetics come into play with abs. Some people have, like my abs aren't perfectly symmetrical. Some people have a more of a pr pronounced transverse. Some people have more, it just depends on where, um, how much separation I guess is in their abdomen wall. Also the amount of abs, the six pack we call it. Some people you know, even have eight, some people have four. That's a matter of genetics. So I'm gonna give you guys today, whether you're a beginner, an intermediate or an advanced person, a ab workout for you guys to follow. So let's do it. All right, the first thing we're gonna be doing is this vertical chair knee raise. Now this one is a great one. It's gonna activate a lot more, a lot more fibers in your abdomen than a crunch would ever do. So on this, we're coming up past as high as we can. High as we can. I don't wanna go all the way back down to the bottom. The goal for beginners here is to get at least 10 reps. So once you can get at least 10 vertical knee ups, we're actually holding yourself here. I want you to come over and I want you to do them hanging. You can also throw in a side. And then, once you can do at least 10 there, what I want you to do is, this is gonna be the most advanced. This is gonna be the most advanced movement we can do here. This is just a toe to bar. And this is a very, we're gonna do it over here because I'm gonna be too tall for this one. What we're gonna be doing here, slow and controlled. The mind-muscle connection is so important for abs. And now that you know the anatomy of the abs, you can kind of think that mind-muscle connection, where are we working in here? We work in that rectus, we work in the transverse. Anytime we're turning the side to side, our external obliques are really in charge of turning our trunk. 
So we're gonna be working those a little bit. So that's why it's important to do movements that, that keep you out of that, that one plane, that transverse plane. We wanna try to break that and do different things here. This one, uh, most advanced movement, hardest movement I'd say, out of all of the, the hanging leg or knee raises, we're gonna go straight up with the, with the toes and control back down. These are a doozy. It makes you feel like someone's punching you in the abs. Again, those are the three different movements and you can pick which level you are. So I want you to pick one of those exercises, either the chair, the hanging, or the toes to bar. And we're doing that first in the movement. All right, for the second movement in the circuit, again, we're training abs in a circuit fashion. So you're gonna do that one, the first exercise we showed you, one of those three, immediately into this next exercise. Next one we're gonna be doing is just a good old fashioned plank. And you can either do it on your elbows, and this is the beginner movement here, and when you do a plank, I want your glutes flexed. I want you to be able to pinch a hundred dollar bill between your butt cheeks, and that way you know how hard you need to squeeze. You don't wanna let that hundred dollar bill go also, you want someone to be able to punch you in your abs. That's how hard you should be flexing. This is almost the same type movement, or not movement, but this is the same type feeling you should have on those heavy compound lifts. So something like a deadlift or a squat, you always want to set up your core first. This is that movement where you're blowing out all that air, flexing. It's exactly how I want you to be. And that's why doing core, doing heavy compound movements is so important for our abs, for our core. Um, that's one of the best ways to strengthen your core is to do those bench, to do those cleans, those deadlifts, the overhead pressing. It all starts with a solid core foundation, which includes our lower back as well. We're going to go over that here. One minute there. Work up to one minute. So once you've mastered that beginner, you're able to just plank for a minute. I want you to start working in some side planks. So one minute, normal, and then come to the side for maybe 30 seconds each. After 30 seconds there, we're gonna be one to 30 seconds on the other side. All right, now for the advanced movement of this section here, I want you guys to get a Swiss ball. And anytime we're busting this out, you know we're needing to engage a lot of these other muscles, these smaller stability muscles, to really just stable that core. So this is gonna be one that's gonna test your limit here. And what we'll be doing is just a roll out plank position. So we're here, we're gonna come all the way in, and then back into a plank position. Oh, you can see. And again, the straighter your legs are, the harder it's gonna be. If you wanna keep your knees tucked into them, that's kinda of probably where I'm at. I'm not to that point where I can do them with straight legs, but that's gonna be our advanced. So we have that number, that number one exercise, then you pick the second exercise out of those three I just demonstrated, and then now we're on to the next, the third exercise. All right, the third grouping of exercises we're gonna be doing here, we're gonna start off with the beginner. This is a bicycle crunch. Bicycle crunch, probably have seen these before. We're not gonna be all the way back. We're gonna to try to hold ourselves in this position and we're just gonna alternate touching our feet on the outside of our, of our shoes, just alternately. Again, this is really working our rectus and also our trans or our external obliques. But then it's also because we're holding it here, we start getting into that deeper, that transverse 
abdomen, and then also the internal obliques as well as we start start twisting here. So this is a good one that really is gonna stimulate all of our abdomen. Once you can graduate by doing at least 30 of these, you're moving on to the intermediate. All right, for the intermediate version of this one, for this third exercise, we're gonna be doing a reverse crunch on a decline board here. And you're gonna notice it's with, a, with a reverse crunch, the main purpose is try to keep that pelvis as close to the back as you can. I don't want it coming all the way up here. I want it coming as close as you can. More of an accordion type movement than actual total leg up. So we're just trying to squeeze as much as we can. Once you get 10, we're not done yet. We're gonna come up to this, that final, the final position, and we're coming straight up. So that's 10 decline crunches, and then 10 toes to air, toes to ceiling there. That is the intermediate intermediate exercise for the third installment of our ad work, ab workout today. The last thing we're gonna do is the advanced movement of the third installment. And then I'm also gonna show you some back exercises because our lower back and our core are closely related. Anytime we're doing a heavy compound lift, that lower back and, and abs are stabilizing. So um, a lot of times when we have back pain, it's actually due to an imbalance with the strength in our abs. So I like to train my abs three times a week where I really come in and hammer them or hammer them after my, my workout. If you're one of those people that don't get abs done, um, try doing them before your workout and then spacing it out a little bit. If you're doing legs that day, you probably wanna, don't wanna do abs before your workout. You need them to really stabilize your core. Also what you can do, just one set of abs. I tell these people this all the time. Just do one thing of abs, maybe do this Come in before your workout to get warmed up. One set, as many as you can. Reverse crunches, one set, as many as you can. A plank for as long as you can. That's a great way to get some ab work in each and every day. If you're gonna do it like that, it's fine to train abs every day. I don't want you doing tons and tons of sets and tons and tons of reps. And if you're doing that, if you want actual ab days, train them three times a week or so. Three to four, depending on if you're getting ready for a show like I am. Let's go show you the final, final movement for our ab training. For the last, the last movement we're gonna do here. These are one of my favorites. I call them around the worlds. And as you can see why, they're gonna involve a lot of external oblique and also transverse. And then as we twist, it's gonna bring all of those, that, that internal obliques, external obliques, transverse ab and rectus. And that is why it's the most advanced movement. So what I want you guys to be doing on this, circuit fashion. So whether you're a beginner, an intermediate, or advanced, you now have all the exercises you do, I want you to do each one four times. So if you're a beginner, you're doing that hanging knee straight into a plank, straight into your bicycle crunch. And you're gonna do four rounds of that. And you're going at least 10 to 15 reps on the hanging chair raise, at least one minute on the plank, and then bicycles. After you do that, 
And if you're an intermediate, you follow the same, same rep schemes for the intermediate. Circuit fashion, same with advanced. So I'm not asking you to do all of them. Pick your, if you're a beginner, beginner, an, idiot, an intermediate, or an advanced person, and stay with that. So we got four rounds of those. After that, we got some back training to do. All right, just because you're all finished up with your ab circuit doesn't mean we're done training the core. I count my lower back as part of the core. So I obviously trained my back um, just like I would any other body part. And that includes my lower back. So anytime you're doing deadlifts, um, anytime you're doing good mornings, anytime you're doing 45 degree hyperextensions, that's lower back. Your lower back actually takes longer than any muscle group in the body to recover. So on ab days, I only like to do, I like to do more stability work for the lower back. So I'm not gonna be doing anything here today with weights. We save that for the actual back day. This is more so just to keep the lower back strengthened without overstimulating it, without annihilating it. So if you're a beginner, we're gonna be on the, on the mat and we're just gonna be doing supermans. Supermans, all it requires, we're gonna be bringing our entire body off the ground. That includes my legs in the back here. So the only thing that is touching the ground is my pelvis and abs. We're just gonna come up as high as we can and back down. Hold for 10 seconds. And back down. And again, it might, it might look a little funny in your gym and you might not feel like it's working a, a ton, but it is. We're strengthening that lower back after our abs. So we got three sets of 10 with a 10 second hold on each rep. So if you are an intermediate, meaning you kind of been around the gym, you did the intermediate ab section, I want you to be doing these for our lower back here. And again, you can do it with no weight. I just have a bar on here because on my back day, I would actually have weight on here. But we're just going all the way down. I don't want that back rolling. Chest is high, back stays nice and tight, back up. That is our intermediate back section. All right here, so this is our Final movement for our core here, if you're a expert, meaning you can do those other two with, with no problem. I don't want those other two to be hard even on these days. We're gonna leave that lower back, that heavy lower back training for back day. But if you're an expert, what I want you guys to do, 45 degree back extension. On this, if you come around the side, you'll notice as I drop my upper body down, I'm pushing my butt back while keeping in in place of the pad. So I'm actually trying to push my butt back. I don't want to roll my back here. That's exactly what I don't want to do. Keep my back straight all the way down. And then from here, we're squeezing the glutes and coming up and bringing the back up. If you do these nice and slow with the correct form, not rounding your back and pushing those hips back, this should be the hardest out of those three movements. If you just do this, it won't be the hardest, but again, we're slow, controlled. <laughs> that is it for our core day. Really, ab training shouldn't take you more than 20 minutes from start to finish. Especially if it's, a, if it's a day where you've trained some core, like if you've done a heavy compound movement, like a deadlift or a squat, um, you really can take out one of these exercises and just get away with two movements. I always like doing at least three movements in a circuit fashion, four rounds, and then hitting some lower back. That's gonna keep your, your core not only looking good, not, not only looking good and tight, we want that narrow, tight waist. That's why you'll never see me doing any side bends with weight. Side bends with weight and crunches, like just on the ground crunches and sit-ups, sit-ups especially, they just make me cringe. They are not the best way to get a six pack or to get that nice cut that goes down. That's gonna be through proper diet, through being at a caloric deficit to where you're dropping body fat, and then spot shaping, not spot reducing, but spot shaping your abs. Do that, you'll be well on your way 
to a nice developed six pack. And let's be honest, there's few things that look more aesthetic than a nice tight waist with a defined six pack. If you have that, you have the, the basics, you have really the basis of a good physique. So happy training, get that done. Let me know in the comments what you think. And there's also other ab exercises. You know, I don't stick to just these. Stick to these for a while and then try something new. If you feel it, stick with it. If you don't, let it go. The last thing you wanna do is just be doing an ab workout just because you see someone else doing it. These are scientifically proven ab exercises. For example, bicycles um, have been shown to, it's like 120% more activation than a typical crunch. So these ones I know will get the job done if you do them right, you have that mind muscle connection. That's not to say that there aren't a ton of other ab exercises that I even do myself. So give it a go, mix it up, but just have fun with it. Happy ab training.